Hello, welcome back. We are now on to step three, approach. So this is a big transition because step one and two, attention and affection are all back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in terms of the breath in before you actually get to work. So that's you taking in the environment, noticing how it affects you, using that uh, emotional response as information for yes, no, this way, that way. And then you actually get into the work, into the lesson, into the actual teaching, into the interacting, into the day. And that is when we get into approach. And what we say is approach the content, very specifically um, approaching, very intentional with the word approach, because it's not arriving. It, it, it's not when you are approaching, you know where you're going, but you're in a ready state. You're in a, you know, there's a measure of caution. There's a, a proceeding slowly because anything could happen and often does. So very different than having everything all planned out and just, you know, head down and just making sure that we get through all the way to the end. So the, the lesson is taught and everything's fine. But the fact of the matter is, we are compromised with an online interaction, uh, compromised in terms of what the children are used to. And so you need to be constantly using step one and two, attention and affection, so that you can approach and tack one way or the other as needed. So approach is this balance between plan and, and adaptation, plan and adaptation. Um, so just Think of that forward momentum, think of that measure of caution, awareness, ready to adapt as you go. So one of the biggest ways that, uh, that I think is very healthy for children to experience and for the teachers is with rituals. Now you have them in the school day, the bell rings, the children leave, they come back, you say hello, lunch at a certain time, classes are at a certain time, even the class, uh, one class itself has different things that happen at different times. So those are rituals, they're, they're anticipated, you can count on them, and that is soothing, that is relaxing to children. Now, your school, I'm sure, is setting it up so that there's rhythm to the days, but this is a new format. So they're going to feel very, uh, seen and cared for if you bring in some rituals and not only rituals that are structured but rituals that are unstructured so what i mean by that is things that are planned that you do all the time at certain points and they can count on it we say a verse before we begin we sing a song together before we begin before we end we do a certain exercise all together and i can see you all on gallery view and we're doing that together so a ritual is the structured rituals are to be counted on. Always try to do them. But there can also be unstructured. So what that can mean is that the timing is consistent, the time within the lesson is consistent, but what you do is up to you. So that's an opportunity for, for children to engage in the room. And this is something that uh, I hadn't talked about in the first two steps, but it's always wonderful to have people in the space working with your children as well, ideally a parent or someone else, not teaching, but just there so that they can interact with them. And then you give them something to talk about or give them something to do. Go in there and ask them their earliest memory. Go in there and have a conversation about cats. Go in there and shake hands. Go in there and hold hands and do a full turn. Uh, so you are putting an unstructured ritual in where they get to go do whatever they're going to do, however they're going to do it. You're not watching. Uh, and they come back having invested in their space. And remember in, in attention, that will calm them down, it will soothe them. Go find uh, the keys to the house. Go find um, some article of clothing that you really like and then come back and hold it up and show it to us. 
that sort of thing, going off and having some unstructured inner relationship with this space is very soothing. And when approaching, take breaks. So there are lots of ways to take breaks. What I mean by breaks is breaks from this. Move away from the screen for a minute. And one of the, one of the best ones that I like is everybody right now, so it's kind of a, a ritual, Let's all turn around, but not just whirl around. I want you to notice everything in the room. I want you to listen, smell, feel your seat as you go 360 degrees. All the way around. I'm listening, smelling, I'm looking, I'm noticing everything. And then you can even talk about it afterwards or you just do that and get back to work. That is a very effective break. There are also breaks that you can do together. Uh, so not just the turning around, but you can all do the same activity. Let's all feel our bodies now. We're gonna look at each other, but we're all gonna scratch our head or massage the top of our head. Really feel that. You can close your eyes for a minute and feel it. And they're, they, they're integrated. This is a really great one that Meredith um, loves to do. You put your the palms or the this part of your over your eyes, and you don't push. You just even putting there. That slight pressure is so soothing, and it just lands us here. So you can say to the class, Let's "Just take a second, everybody, cover your eyes like this." Same thing with pulling on the ears. This actually will in my experience at least, help you hear better. And you know all this energy that you're putting into focusing on this, all right here, sitting, not moving, all of that, it's tiring for you and for them. So regular breaks as you approach your way through the content uh, to just feel your body and be in this space. And giving them because they're going to miss stuff. They miss stuff anyway because they're children and because we're just not built to be taking every word in. It's gonna be especially the case with this. So with storytelling, when I'm telling a story, I will often double back, often double back, often double back to remind them, who are we talking about? What is happening right now? What was their intention? What was their intention? And what was their intention? So do that with your lesson because like I said, it's difficult to attend right here. So double back and say, well, what we're doing now is this. In a moment, we're going to do that. What we did was this, and now we're going to do this. We did this before this before this, and now what we're going to do is this. And uh, children can get involved in that recall. Um, you can say we're going to approach this from three different directions and then proceed to do that. So tell the story of the lesson from this perspective, from this perspective, and from this perspective. That kind of repetition is soothing to them as well, especially if it is in a ritualistic form so that they know it's coming. We're going to review again in just a couple sentences what we just covered, and you can see them relax. And step four, allowance, is very much connected to step three. Just like step one and two are back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, Step three and four are the same. And then you can see how actually all four are playing together at the same time. So I'll see you again for the final one in just a moment.